on, you know, the Zoom guys. Is this good? That's can, fine. Yay. All right. Hey, Coach, can you turn your – are you on the phone? Yeah. Uh, can you turn it – my school computer, it'll explode. Can you turn it horizontal? <laughs> the phone? Let's see. Is it going to – is he going to do it? Flip. Oh. I think we should just do the show like that. Rather not. How come it didn't flip? Yeah, I don't know. That's it's it's an iPhone 12. Don't judge, all right? Do you do you have just the rotation right. locked? I mean, it looks great to me. Yeah. Hold on. Let's... I don't know. All right, well, there's we'll go, our cold we'll open. Vertical. <laughs> <laughs> you two morons <laughs> sitting here like, eh, eh. Cold <laughs> open. All right. All right, here we go. Roll the music. We've made it. We have made it to week 12. Why do you act like that's a good thing? It's not, but we've made it. Welcome to the show, the everyone. The season's almost over, and you're it celebrating. Is. I know. I'm not celebrating. I'm celebrating the fact we're getting to the playoffs, which are always fun. Always fun. Yeah, I mean, I think the regular season's Look, pretty fun, Look, we got too. this from Caleb, this right here. This is all the region scenarios. All of them. Yeah. Well, not all of them, just the ones in our coverage area. Hey, look, that's Caleb, that's Walker Ticker McQuarrie, and that's, uh, what's your name, Seth, Seth Chapman, the El Producer. And notice there's nobody here this week. I've got elbow room. Jeff's gone. Seth's wearing a beanie on his microphone. Look, later in the Does show. Does this change the sound at all? Uh, your, may, yeah. Your just eagle. a little. No, not at all. Not at all? No. Well, okay. I mean, I, don't, I would need to be in a situation where I would use the, do the eagle. I know, but you've got plenty of room in case you need to use the. Well, I guess that's a good thing. But so it just depends on how I'm feeling. Yeah. Well, you know, how are you feeling? How are you I know feeling, why Walker? Bo, I know why Bo's celebrating. So. Georgia won down in Jacksonville this week. That's right. There you go. That's a reason. That's We're a not reason. celebrating the end of the high school. Caleb was there. Season. We're the, celebrating a Georgia win. Caleb was there. I was there. I was it. It was good. It's always great to uh, watch Georgia beat Florida. And uh, how soon did the fans exit? Uh, the Florida fans, you mean? Uh-huh. Uh, about second, middle, mid to late second quarter. Of course they did. Yeah. But, hey, big win. Oh, big win. Well, you know, the Florida fans also start the fourth quarter. They do that whole, uh, they lock arms and do like, the this, little... they sway and sing some, I don't know what the song is they sing, but I, we were we were kind of joking because they didn't have enough people at the start of the fourth quarter to do that. <laughs> there was nobody <laughs> next to them to lock arms with. So, you know. Well, hey. It is what it is, right? Dogs win. As uh, uh, speaking of big wins, we had some region championship clinching yeah. wins this week. Commerce, a big Boy, what win. A game that was. That was a crazy game. Yeah, I mean, they didn't win by four touchdowns, but I still covered. Got my lock. Yeah, man. If if I, I and I can't remember who the Raven County receiver was that had the fumble at the end, but man, if they get in the end zone right there, I hope my my shot that I called almost lands perfectly because they would have won by one because mm. Commerce went for two in the overtime. And I'm sitting there thinking like, oh my gosh, Raven's going to score and this is going to land. But so so just watching happen. that game, the scores come in. Jeff covering that game down at Commerce and watching the scores come in. I'm like, holy crap, this is a great game. Um, also, Flowery Branch and, and Loganville game I got to cover. It was a good game. It didn't fall in Flowery Branch's favor, but also didn't play. I think the way we thought no, it would play, it like not. Lumpkin or uh, not Lumpkin County, Loganville's running game oh, was, was the dominant was factor in the game, and none of us saw either team's running game really being Mm-mm. that big a factor in no. this one. Mm-hmm. No, and we did. We saw Loganville up front dominate and. Uh, you know, 185 yards from their back in that game, and and that was the diff- actually the difference in that game was the final two minutes of the first half, where Flowery Branch was up 14 to three. They went in the locker room down 18 14, just yeah. a crazy turnaround, and that was kind of the momentum shift there. And and, and Branch just couldn't get it back uh, in that game, and so now they have to they head down to Heritage Con- Conyers tonight to to play a big time game they need a win at to get in the playoffs. Yeah, Flowery Branch would lose any three-way tie break Mm -hmm. um, that they could potentially land into. So they have got to win this game at Heritage because if they lose this game to Heritage, they end up in a three-way tie. Loganville's already in in the three seed. We already know Jefferson and Eastside are the top two seeds. So Flowery Branch has got to beat Heritage. And a month ago, I don't know that I would have had any concern with that. 
Heritage is playing better mm-hmm. than what they yeah. were earlier in the year. So it's not the the gimme, I think, that it looked like probably a month ago. You know, and for Flowery Branch to go down to Heritage, they're going to have to do things a little bit differently than they did against Loganville. And part of the reason is playing disciplined football. They had some penalties that, that hurt them, some personal fouls. So and, and talking to Coach Tester after the game, he said exactly that. They've got to clean that type of stuff up. That's just not uh, the Flowery Branch way. And I think they'll have that cleaned up for the game tonight. And I think Flowery Branch will get get past Heritage. Well, that, wait, you don't give away your pick yet. No, I'm not. But I'm just saying I think they will. Uh in a big game and also another big game as we'll roll on into this and we'll talk more about the region uh standings and the region this stuff right here in a few minutes but but at, since we're in 85a jefferson down at east side that is for the region championship and that is not a cakewalk for the dragons no not a cakewalk at all i, I had a chance to see east side in person one time this year very physical football team i think different than most other teams in 85a outside of jefferson in that but besides Jefferson, they're probably the one mm-hmm. team in that region that f- at least they feel like they can go toe to toe from yep. a physicality standpoint. They're going to line up and run the. B- I, I don't have the names of their players in front of me, but uh, they're running back number two. I know mm-hmm. he's a he's a heavy load, and uh, Jefferson's going to have to slow him down. Um, East Side's just going to try to run power football. That that's what they're going to do. They will throw the ball some, and they'll play action and do stuff like that. But they're going to try to run power football against a Jefferson team walker that is kind of built around the same thing. Yeah, I mean, this game is going to be decided in the trenches between which offensive line can get their running backs going quicker and get them uh, the offense to be able to move the chains. That I don't see this game being any higher scoring than like 21 to 14. Yeah. I think that's the type of game that this is going to be, and it's really going to hinge on for Jefferson – if Sammy Brown can get going in the running game, the offensive line is going to have to be able to get that uh, going for the Dragons. But then, can Sammy Brown do something else in the special teams game, I think, is going to be the big key. We know he can punt the ball a mile, but I think that maybe you're going to have to have some sort of trickery coming out of some special teams for the Dragons to be able to get out in front. I know that you know this is Halloween week, trick or treat you know type thing. That's kind of what I was going for with the trickery. Uh, But anyway, I... I think that Sammy Brown's ability to move the chains is the difference in this eat. game. Exactly. I think he's. The, I think Sammy's the the key difference maker in this game. If he's able to get the third and twos and the and the fourth and ones, and Jefferson's offense is able to stay on the field, I think Jefferson has the ability to hold onto the ball long enough to keep East Side's offense on the sideline and allow Jefferson's defense to really get rested up and uh, go against that really tough offensive line that Eastside has. Also, yeah. a, another applause for uh, Walker brushing right by Bo's terrible jokes. Yes. Good job, Walker. Way also, go, Walker. I Thanks. will say another thing, though, Walker, which is when Flowery Branch got back into that game with Eastside, they started getting Jeremiah Ware behind people. They started hitting the long ball in the passing game. I wonder, do we see Jefferson take some downfield shots against that Eastside defense, try to soften them up with Sammy Brown up the middle? See if you can't hit the big play, and maybe one or two of those end up being a difference maker over the course of the game. And we could also just play this game out, and both teams just do exactly Mm -hmm. what they've been doing all year, and Jefferson's just better and wins by 14 to 17 points. That's also a complete possibility here. Look, go back to the Clark Central game for both of these teams. They both beat them by a touchdown, and specifically go back to the Jefferson-Clark Central game, of which we kind of thought, okay, Clark Central's big enough to slow down Sammy Brown. That didn't happen. Uh, And... It was a close game. Yes, a touchdown uh, win for both teams. So perhaps we're going to see something like that. You you talk about trying to slow Sammy down. I kind of tend to agree with what you just said. Will we see Jefferson try to go downfield and hit some passes? So uh, it's going to be an interesting battle between these two teams, a battle tonight, you know, because they had to put three good region games on a Thursday night. So, yes, a battle tonight down at east side for Jefferson. All right, guys, region, looking at all this region stuff, This what interests you the most before we get to the next two games we're going to talk about? And, and what is the region that is going to be the most dramatical finish? Well, I, I mean, there's a lot of them that are on the table, obviously. I think the one that could be the most dramatic is Region 8 4A mm. because all the drama is going to be focused in one game. Yep. And that's the North Hall East Forsyth game because – the way it's going to shake out is 
Cherokee Bluffs going to North Oconee. Mm-hmm. That, that's a tough. That's a tough that's draw. A tough one. Um, mm-hmm. But Cherokee Bluff doesn't necessarily need to win. All Cherokee Bluff needs is for North Hall to be the East Forsyth. And I know Cherokee Bluff and North Hall don't exactly get along, but Cherokee Bluff's going to be rooting for North Hall on Friday night because if North Hall beats East Forsyth, the Bears are in regardless of if they lose by a million at North Oconee, it won't matter. The Bears are in the playoffs if North Hall beats East Forsyth. And that adds a lot of drama there to it for the Broncos. And if there's also drama because, you know, there's a fan base 40 miles away somewhere in Bogart watching the score of this yeah. game, wanting to know what happens. So you've got here North Hall win or loss by nine. So if North Hall loses, is this what you're saying? No, no, no. Cherokee Bluff, Cherokee Bluff has to either beat North Oconee or have North, North Hall, Hall win, win or, outright. Okay, okay. If they beat North Oconee, then they could get in either way, depending on the score. Then you could have a potential three-way tie, plus yeah. 12, minus 12. Um, it gets a little complicated after that, but um, that's if Cherokee Bluff beats North Oconee. All they need is for North Hall to beat East for sight, mm-hmm. and it doesn't matter what happens. Yeah. I mean, how how big does that Madison County game loom now for the Bears? You go back to that game where you miss an extra point, you have a lot of penalties in the game, a couple turnovers. Cherokee Bluff wins that game. They're already in. They don't have to yeah. worry well, about North Hall East Forsyth, right? You point to that game, Walker, but that was against one of the best teams in the region. I point to the Walnut Grove game that they lost. Mm. Because, that too. I mean, that, that was the Very one. Very unexpected. That's the only game on the slate for Cherokee Bluff that I can look at and say, you know what, they were the better team and mm-hmm. lost that game. I, they're better than Walnut Grove, and they just lost. They just didn't play well. Uh, a lot of turnovers in that game. That's the one that I point to more. So pointing two games, I, how much does East Forsyth want the Bluff game back? Oh, no doubt. You know, no, Yeah, uh, big time. When you look at all this kind of stuff, you know, and same with North Hall, they want the Madison County game back. Um, so I guess we could sit here all day and talk about uh, that type of stuff. But let's get to some more of the games that we're talking about here today. I mean, nor- by the way, in that region, North Hall's in the best shape. They like, are. They, nor- are. they have not technically guaranteed a spot, but North Hall would have to have Cherokee Bluff beat North Oconee, and North Hall would have to lose to East Forsyth by, nine, by 10 points or more right. in order to miss the playoffs. So the Trojans, they're in good shape. Really, the bottom line is just win your football game That's and nothing else solution. matters. <laughs> but it, they've got the security blanket of knowing that if Cherokee mm-hmm. Bluff loses to North Oconee, the number two team in the state of Georgia right. in 4A, they're in regardless. All right, guys, let's roll on. Union County and Fellowship, this for the Region 8-2A Championship. Also tonight, a big game for the Panthers who come into this game upsetting number 10 ranked Athens Academy last week in just a dominant performance at one point leading the game 35 to 7 uh, and a insane finish there for the Panthers in that game uh, holding on to win and talking to coach Perry earlier this week and coach Perry was very excited about the the win but did say that you know it was just another day at the office for his team and they are really focused on this fellowship team that has a lot of weapons. They have to go to Roswell, guys. It's going to be a tough game for the Panthers. I think they have enough offense, but can they break the fellowship defense and slow their offense? Yeah, I think that's the biggest key, Bo. I think that you look at fellowship Christian and what the Paladins do offensively. They just score points. Mm -hmm. They don't have a great defense, but they don't need a great defense when they're able to score 50 points a game, whatever it is that they're scoring in region play. That's the that's the matchup I'm looking forward in this game is can that front seven of Union County get pressure in the backfield of Fellowship Christian to get the quarterback off of his spot and make them make throws that they're not used to making and try and keep this game lower scoring. If they're able to do that on the road, Union County's got a really good shot of winning the region title, Caleb, but that front seven is going to have to do something pretty crazy against this Paladin offense. Yeah, no doubt about it. It comes down to the Union County defense because they're – look, and and Coach Perry and the head coaching staff, they've done the scouting work. They know what Fellowship's got, and they know as well as anybody else that you can absolutely score 28, 35 points on Fellowship Christian and get boat raced like because yeah. that's just what they can do on offense. They can put 50, 60 – they put 70 on the board. I think was it on Providence earlier yes, this year? 73. Yeah. So uh, you can you can score 28, 35 points. And by the way, I think Union County will. 
I do too. But it's going to come down to can they stop Fellowship Christian's offense? That's the whole game, yeah, I think. You've got the number four and number five offense going up against against each other in in Class Two A. So yeah, Union can score some points here. And Coach Perry said earlier this week he was very proud of his defensive effort against Athens Academy. But it's just going to be a different bird here for him as or for this team going down to Fellowship, playing in a region championship. They've not won a region championship since nineteen seventy three. So they're very motivated. And I don't know if you want to call a possible, maybe, upset alert, but this Panther team is going to go in there with the mindset that they're going to knock off well, they just that you got to put this game on upset yeah. alert because they just pulled the upset the week mm-hmm. before. So you, you absolutely have to say it's an upset alert game. I think no doubt about that. So region implications on this game, this region, Region A2, and not really that many. Um, I mean, you look down through here, Fellowship uh, clinched the top two seed. Union, uh, of course, has clinched the playoffs. I mean, the, the sneaky game on here is East Jackson, Providence, Christian, yeah. because East Jackson needs to win in order – or East Jackson, Athens Academy, I'm sorry. Right. East Jackson's playing yep. Athens <laughs> Academy. That East Jackson needs to win that game by 12 points or more and have Providence Christian – lose I, I think in order to make the playoffs otherwise I think they would lose with whatever the three-way mm-hmm. tiebreaker would be there so East Jackson needs some help but they also really need to help themselves by beating Athens Academy and hey Athens Academy I think they've lost two in a row now so yeah. do the Eagles get them reeling mm-hmm. a little bit uh, maybe all right, guys, let's move on to the East Forsyth North Hall game. Another 8 4 a matchup that we talked about a little bit, but this one big time over at the Brickyard as the Broncos desperately needing a win over the Trojans to get in the playoffs. At the top of the show, we talked about what those scenarios are. And again, the simple answer for the Broncos is just win because North Hall, they're already in. Yeah, yeah, for all intents and purposes, North Hall's in. I mean, there's there is a way, and Caleb mentioned it. There's a way that North Hall can get out. I think with the three way tie break, plus twelve, minus twelve, whatever that is. But North Hall's basically in. East Forsyth, though, we go back to that Cherokee Bluff game that they played, and it was such a low scoring game that the Bluff ended up winning. East Forsyth's gonna have to have, make this a low scoring game. I know that's not exactly what the Broncos want to do. They like to score points and and get this game going up and down the field, but I think they're going to have to keep this game lower scoring to try and keep that North Hall offense off the field that we know that they can just put up numbers just based off of what they're doing with Tanner Marsh at quarterback. If East Forsyth's defense can get off the field and the offense can slow this game down and make it a little bit muddy, we talked last week about a couple teams making games muddy. If East Forsyth makes this game muddy, the Broncos – have a great shot of pulling off maybe considered an upset at the Brickyard. It's always hard to win there, so maybe that's an upset, Caleb. I don't know. Yeah, I would I would say if East Forsyth won, it would be an upset because the Broncos have now, I think they've lost three out of their last four. One was to North Oconee. We get it. Um, another one was to Madison County in a shootout. Okay, you kind of understand that one. Then they also had the loss at Cherokee Bluff, which was just a rough loss where they just did not move the ball on offense at all in that game. And I got news for mm-hmm. you. If you don't move the ball much on offense in the Brickyard, you're going to get smacked. Yeah, uh, It's just that simple. So, um, And I think East Forsyth will move the ball a little bit better, but I think that the East Forsyth defense against the North Hall offense is a really, really interesting matchup to me. Um, you know, I, I think for East Forsyth, they've been – their last two games they've played – Madison County running the triple yes. option and Chester T running the wing T. I have to imagine the Broncos probably a little relieved to get to play a more conventional offense this week in what North Hall is going to run. Now, the problem is that conventional offense is also really good at what they really. do and has a good, really good quarterback in Tanner Marsh. Yep. Uh, definitely going to stress that secondary of the Broncos out a lot. And then, of course, on the flip side, the Broncos, they could stress them out on the run game because the Broncos, that's kind of been their bread and butter of this season. Guys, I forgot one thing of the show, by the way. It's time to get to Jeff Hart's stat of the show. Wait, but he's... Roll the music! Here's some things you need to know. It's Jeff Hart's interesting stat of the show. Yeah! 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 Guess there's no stat of the show today. That was great. 
I know what we can do instead of the stat of the show. What, 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 we do? Do? what are we going to do for the next 10 minutes? We could. We could t- <laughs> <laughs> There's two other regions we haven't talked anything about today. Okay, well, let's talk Seven, about them. 7-3-A and 8-6-A both have some interesting playoff scenarios. So I don't know where you guys want to start, but uh, uh, we can fill Jeff Hart's stat of the show with the other two regions. Okay, fill it up. Let's start with 7-3-A. And we know Lumpkin's already won it. Wesleyan has technically clinched two spot, correct? They would they would win any potential right. three way tie break for the two spot. They've got tie breakers on everybody. So Gilmer has also clinched a playoff spot, correct? So now you've got Pickens and White County. They're in contention for the four seed, and then you've got the scenarios, Walker. Well, and how big does that Pickens win last week against White County come into this game? We. Huge. I think we all thought that the Warriors were going to rebound after the emotional loss at home against Pickens. They they lost that four overtime game to Lumpkin mm-hmm. two weeks ago. Thought they would rebound at home. Dragons came to play. I I don't know. Gilmer's going to make this a very tough road, Caleb, for White County to get in just based off of what Gilmer does. And I don't know that White County has figured out how to stop the quarterback run because. Cal Faulkner ran for a lot of yards. Pickens County's quarterback ran for a lot of yards. That's going to be a big thing that Gilmer's going to do Friday night. Yeah, and they're not going to make it easy because they present a completely different offensive system to anything anybody else does in Region 738. Yes. So it's not like anything. And, you know, the thing about it is, is North Hall used to run the wing tee back in the day. So if this had been about, uh, you know, about three years ago, White County would have already gotten a tune-up yeah. for playing the wing tee with North Hall. They're not going to get that for the Gilmer game. Um, so yeah, I think it's an interesting one for sure. And, uh, you know, basically the way it works out for white County, they have either got to beat Gilmer or have Pickens lose. And the thing is, even if, even if they beat Gilmer, if Pickens beats Wesleyan, which we're all expecting Wesleyan to win that game, but if Pickens were to pull the upset, then, you know, white County not only has to beat Gilmer, they got to beat him by seven or more to get that plus 12 minus 12 tiebreaker. There's no doubt Pickens has a shot against Wesleyan. There's no doubt. Wesleyan struggled against everybody in the region. Yes, they've won, uh, you know, except against Lumpkin County, but they've struggled. So this could be interesting come Friday night when we're looking back at this page and let's say Pickens has upset Wesleyan and let's say White County has beat Gilmer. It will be a very interesting setup for whatever we're going to be looking at and more headaches. Look, in most of these regions, we get a pretty good idea for who's, and this has been a chaotic year in these regions. Yeah. And, you know, for, because for most years, and I would include this year, you get a feel for who the best teams probably in the region are, but then you get these, these upsets along the way. And they just, and this Pickens over white County was one of them. It just flips the whole script. In uh, the let me tell standards. you, it was a, what a blocked extra point that put white County mm-hmm. behind the eight ball the rest of the night could not convert a two point try, you know, and just looking at the scoring drives that Mark sent me, it's just, I, I was tired after going through those <laughs> just because of the way it, it ended. And you should just, have read the ones from the Lumpkin white game. Well, yeah, I, <laughs> uh, of course, but, but yeah, so Regis seven, three, eight, a interesting finish there. Eight, six, a Walker. You want to talk about that one. That one's kind of interesting. Hab central though, really controls their destiny here by, just getting a win at Shiloh on Friday. And and Shiloh is definitely not one of the better teams in the region. They're they're not Appalachian, but uh Shiloh's athletic. And correct me if I'm wrong, that game's at Shiloh. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's in Snellville. So that's a tough road trip for Mount Airy. Habersham Long Central's drive. got their work cut out for them. The Maybe thing is, a, though, is that they have the tie break over Jackson County, who's got an even tougher yeah. task in playing Gainesville this week at home. Well, maybe you can stop by and have picnic at Stone Mountain on the way. Well, here's down. the thing: it, it's like Walker said, Habersham Central. They are mm-hmm. in the driver's seat for this. The only way Jackson County gets in the playoffs is if Habersham Central stumbles, and that's regardless. Jackson County could pull off a massive upset over Gainesville, which I don't think they're going to do. Not trying to spoil my pick, but I, I even if Jackson County pulled the upset their playoff lives are still not in their hands because it's still, it still only it really only matters what Habersham Central does. It does. It matters what Habersham does. And by the way, coming up uh, on the website Friday morning, also on Bill Main's show, you can hear from Benji Harrison, Habersham Central's head coach, as he talks about the big game against Shiloh and going down there and, and just discussing the fact that Shiloh is an athletic program 
who is young and who has shown some good things down the stretch. And so it won't be an easy game for Hab Central, let's say that, because of the athleticism of Shiloh. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think he feels pretty good going into this game. And, and again, controlling your own destiny, your own playoff. They haven't been in the playoffs, what, two years, three years? So yeah. they have a lot to play for in this game. And again, uh, just a, uh, another region that is crazy with the finish. So here's what we just did, guys. We filled Jeff Hart's stat of the show with multiple stats. Multiple. So we're, And took a long, we're long time. Yeah. That's it. We just did Jeff's job for him. You're, I consider this welcome, an absolute Jeff. win. I do. You're welcome, Jeff. He looked. All, all he did was look. All he did was look at me. That's all he did. Just, just go. Start, start the thing. <laughs> all right, let's get to the rundown picks, guys. It's. Week 12 rundown, and first off, we need to welcome in our guest picker this week. Uh, Who's our guest picker this our week? Our guest picker is Coach Nicholas Garrett. What's up? What's going on, man? What's going on? How you doing, man? Hey, man, if I was doing any better, I'd be a twin, and I'd be working with you guys. <laughs> hey. hey, you're just happy to be here, right? Hey, man, when in doubt, go hang with Bo Wilson. You can't go wrong. <laughs> You know it. That's what everybody else says, too, by the way. Hey, Nobody Coach, uh, Coach. obviously, uh, yeah, we, we got the news lately that you're stepping down from Riverside. Do you care to tell the people, um, you know, kind of what you're doing these days and uh, what you got coming up? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, I'm just uh, getting everything ironed out here. Um, I'm not the type to not finish what I start. Um, so I'm, I'm getting uh, our seniors ironed out and, and making sure classes and and logistics are in order here, and then uh, come January, I'll be uh, uh, spearheading a brand new uh, junior college football program at Andrew College in Cuthbert, Georgia. Coach, by the way, um, how are those Cherokee Bluff Lady Bears going to be in well, basketball? First off, Bo, I'm glad you asked. Um, I can't put the cart before the horse. I feel you're setting me up since it's a media day tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, all I'm going to tell you is the best head coach in my house is my wife, and uh, that's all you're going to get as far as bluff responses out of me to oh, tomorrow. So you're bluffing us then. <laughs> that, 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 that's extremely well done on the PR side, Coach. From a PR guy, that is well done. I, I caught that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, Lame. I was hoping we'd get some inside information so we can ask questions tomorrow. Well, um, if you know my wife, um, I don't want to sleep on the couch tomorrow or tonight or any other night, so I'm not giving you anything. <laughs> Wait, how about giving so us your well, picks? He's a, he's a perfect head coach. He knows exactly what to he say. He knows exactly what to say. That's right. All right, well, maybe we can get some picks out of you, so let's get to the pick. The pick order this week is me, Seth, Caleb, Coach, and Walker. That's how it's going to go. The random generator pick me first this week for some reason. Um so anyway, by, by the way, Bo, we got to make up two games on Jeff. Yeah, somehow. Yeah, I don't think we're going to, though, because it's pretty generic picking this week. Don't you think? Well, there are some games out there. OK, well, let's get to it. We'll start at the some, top. Somebody needs to take some chances. Yeah, well, Jeff leads by two games. Then it's uh, me and Walker and then Caleb. He's down two games to us, Seth. Oh, Seth, we gotta we gotta talk about Seth this week because of Tim Whitmire's awful picking last week. <laughs> Seth jumps over the guest picker. Uh, he hey. finished ten and three via no credit yeah. to myself. Simply that <laughs> God bless you, Tim, but your picks were trash. Tim was eight and five. So listen, I'm not gonna say a bad word about Tim because he filled in for me on the scoreboard show and allowed me to get to Jacksonville earlier last and weekend, me so. and me filled yeah. in for me too. and for Walker as well. well I'm not saying anything bad. I'm saying yeah. thank you. Yeah, like, yeah, for, yeah. <laughs> for for helping me. I needed it. I do have to say, last week I did publish the guest picker standings, and Ryan Murray from Cherokee Bluff was the first to comment. <laughs> he was not happy that I showed that he has the worst record of all the guest what pickers. What was his record? I think it was seven and five. Seven that's and six. Good. Seven that's, and six. Seven good. and six. That's right. That makes a bowl Baker's game. Yeah, it makes a bowl game, but. Uh, Anyway, <laughs> so there you have it. And we'll uh, continue to publish those uh, as uh, the playoffs go on. All right, let's get to it. Top of the list today, Flowery Branch at Heritage Conyers. Uh, a big game for Flowery Branch. Of course, a tough one for them last week. But I'm going to go with the Falcons in this one. Yeah, give me the Falcons. 
Uh, so a little bit of a story. I bumped into Flowery Branch quarterback Josh Oliver earlier this okay. week and his family. They all apologized to me for not helping me with my pick <laughs> last week against Loganville. And I said, look, it's I no, no problem whatsoever. However, I now need to make up games on Jeff Hart. And so, uh, I, guys, I really need you to help me out on this one. I'm picking Flowery Branch. Um, Although I think they're a little bit more concerned about making sure they get in the playoffs yeah, than they too. are with our pick of standings. <laughs> All right, Coach. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to go with Flyer Branch as well. I'm going to take the branch as well. I was the only one that picked Loganville last week. I felt good to get that game. Yeah, whatever, yeah. Walker. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> I had to get the jab in there a little yeah. bit, you know? Yeah. I was on vacation, mm-hmm. and I picked them right. Yeah, yeah. okay. Do whatever. Uh, Jefferson at Eastside. This is a Region 8-5A championship game. Not going to be an easy game for Jefferson as uh, they face the Eagles at home. But uh, I'm going to go with Jefferson and Sammy Brown. I just I can't pick against them. So Jefferson in that one. Yeah, 100%. I'm going with Sammy Brown to to lead the Magic Dragons all the way to – you know, victory at East. The Magic East Dragons? Yeah, to ride the Magic Dragon. How Can long you please have you had say that the one song? in your pocket? Like two seconds, actually. Can you I just sing thought the of the song? I don't know the song. You don't know the Puff the Magic Dragon song? No. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'll take Jefferson. <laughs> Coach, you will wait, not was, make wait, me sing. sing. Before I get my pick. Let's, let's hear it, man. You, you, you put it out there. Let's hear you yeah, sing. We got some time. L- yeah, but see, I'm one of those like young people that just say things and I don't know, know the like, references. I only so know like, the first five words. I have so. no he idea. Still, Coach, he still doesn't know the Where's Loganville reference. Because like, you won't tell me. I won't tell I just, you. But, but Google, but Google <laughs> exists. I'm, I spend way too much time editing this show, making you morons look good to it's Google stuff. It's always that oh, excuse. Boy. It's always that excuse. Oh, I'm going to go with Jefferson in hopes my man in the dungeon gets elevated to that green room one day. Yes, sir. Walker. I think uh, I think the east side can keep this game close for a while, but Sammy Brown takes over in the fourth quarter. Jefferson pulls away late. Union County and Fellowship, another region championship game, 8-2-A. they got to go to Fellowship, Roswell. Um, man, I picked against the Panthers last week, and the Panthers knocked off the private school at Athens Academy. A Spartans. lot of us picked against yeah. Panthers. Yeah, they did. A lot of us and, lost that pick. And um, I'm going to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go with Fellowship in this one. I can too. see that one coming. Not so fast. Ooh. I'm going with Union oh. County. Ooh. I yeah I I feel I feel kind of uh, I feel kind of foolish sitting up here after uh, picking Union to lose and then they beat Athens Academy and then turning around and doing what I'm about to do now which is picking them to lose again this week mm. to Fellowship Christian I've got the Paladins mm. winning the region title I just think Fellowship's too good on offense yeah they just too. score on everybody man Coach. yeah I'm gonna agree I'm I'm going Fellowship. If this game's in Blairsville, I think I take the Panthers, but since it's at Fellowship Christian, uh, the Paladins play really well at home, and like you said, Caleb, they score a lot of points. I don't think Union can keep up. All right, Appalachia, North Forsyth. Um, Yeah, I'm going to go with uh, North Forsyth. Yeah, North Forsyth. I I didn't think I needed to pick, but North Forsyth. Hey, Hey, Walker. Walker, say it with me here. Appalachia. Appalachia is bad. They're bad. <laughs> North you got, Forsyth. You guys synced up at the end. I'm proud of that. But North, like it was off at first, but you got it at the North, end. North Forsyth is going to roll big. Say it with me, Walker. They're bad. bad. <laughs> that sync was bad. <laughs> that wasn't That wasn't great. Yeah, I know. Coach? Yeah, I'm going, going North Forsyth. Raiders. Okay, Lumpkin. And I had West. to pull out my Chris Berman there a little bit, <laughs> yeah. you know. Lumpkin at West Hall. Does West Hall have a chance here? Lumpkin well, County pick wins this one big. I keep forgetting it's your pick first, so you do this setup, and then I'm looking around like who's going to make the. Well, I was hoping somebody like, oh, would you. jump in and say, "No, <laughs> they, they, no, they don't." Um, yeah, Lumpkin big. I got Lumpkin. Coach. Yeah, when in doubt, go with the farm boys. Go with Lumpkin. Biggest question in this game is how long do Cal Faulkner and Mason Sullins play? Huge. Lumpkin big. Yeah, I, I say they'll be out early. By the way, you can hear that game on AM 550. That's right. AM 550 can hear that game. Uh, Central Gwinnett at Buford. The Wolves. 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 Yeah, I'm going with the Wolves because Jeff Hart will kill me. <laughs> he'll, he'll, like, try. 
Yeah, he'll try. No. I, I, don't, I wouldn't I don't be too know. worried. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't be too worried, be worried about that coach. <laughs> you never no. trust a guy with four tennis rackets, man. <laughs> <laughs> and a large pizza. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which will do more damage, the pizza or the rackets? The combination of both. Yeah, right? yeah. The hot cheese. He just <laughs> so the hot cheese, the pepperonis. Yeah, right at you. Uh, oh, Buford and Tom riding. Okay, the bluff at North Oconee. Mm, I'm gonna have to go with uh, the Titans. Yeah, give me the give me. Well, Seth, you, you go ahead. I mean, we're gonna agree, uh, North Oconee. Yeah, North Oconee. Right. Same Z's, North Oconee. I didn't realize David Pollock was on the sidelines for the Titans this year after he got released from ESPN. I'll take North Oconee in this one either way, but I just thought that was cool. I saw it on social this week. I think he was on the sideline for I'd, the North Oconee Bluff game last year, if I remember. He was uh, at North Hall as well. So, Yeah, I just didn't realize that. Yeah. So, okay. I do live four states away. Right. You do. <laughs> Efo at North Hall. This is a battle for a... Uh, playoff spot, as we talked about earlier in the show. Um, mm, 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 mm. I'm going to go with the Broncos in this one. That's a, this is a and super- I'm going to get heckled by Jody Kinney when I show up at the game Friday immediately, along with I don't know how many other folks, 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 I can't even say the word, in green shirts. So <clears throat> there you have it. Yeah, this one's super tough. I'm really torn with this one, but... I, I, I'm going to have to go with North Hall. At the Brickyard, I'm going with North Hall. It has a tough call yeah. to me. North Hall, I think, is the better football team. East Forsyth, I think, is going to have a greater sense of urgency because North Hall doesn't have to win this game right. to make the playoffs. East Forsyth has to win to get in the play. So, tough call. I just think North Hall offensively is 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 better. And East Forsyth's defense has shown some some chinks in the armor here lately. So, I think a little bit of a shootout. I'm going to take the Trojans. Yeah, I like the quarterback from North Hall, no doubt about it. And, and they're doing some good stuff. But uh, I got to watch East Forsyth play in person, man. And I just like what they do. And, and uh, they're they're tenacious and they, they gain strength throughout the game. So I'm going East Forsyth. Yeah, I like the Broncos' defense in this game. Like you said, Caleb, they have, they've shown some chinks in the armor, but I think that they – get it right and get the one stop they need in a shootout and Broncos get the playoff spot. <clears throat> yeah, North Hall had a lot of turnovers against Cedar Shoals last week. They got away with it. Mm. Uh, they won't get away with it if they do that same thing this week. They need to clean that up for sure. East Jackson Athens Academy, uh, Spartans win this one. Spartans. Yeah, I'm going to go with, well, hmm, uh, Mm-hmm. Are, you are you about gonna, to not gonna, so fast you yourself? Hang on. Are, are you, are you gonna, are gonna do it? You gonna fly? You go fly. Uh, Athens Academy giving up some points. East Jackson can score a little bit. I have been. Uh, I was one of the hardest bandwagon riders on this East oh, Jackson team you, early you in the year. You and uh, Walker both. I jumped yep. off of the train. I. I. It felt dirty. Mm, it felt wrong. Us up to go. It stay felt off bad. The train. Yeah. So you know what. <laughs> Go Eagles! What, what, are you, oh, what are you doing? What are you doing with your arms? That's a coach. It's an eagle. He's trying to swim, oh, coach. Yeah, yeah, you got to keep. You got to put him in sync, man. You got to put more juice in the shoulders. Maybe oh, stand gotta, up and I, do I that. I don't have the. Well, then I'm out of the view of the camera, so it doesn't. <laughs> You're already partially out of the view. I got we, we get the gist. <laughs> yeah, we got you. <laughs> yeah, I'm going. I'm going to say I'm going to East Jackson. I'm gonna. I know Athens Academy is well coached, but. Got to see a little bit of East Jackson, man. I'm, I'm going to go with them. Caleb, let's get on the bandwagon again. Aluminum yes. Kool-Aid for everybody. Yes, that's right. <laughs> I forgot about that aluminum Kool-Aid joke. So it was tasty. a long time ago. That was like week three, wasn't <laughs> yeah. it? It was so long ago. Aluminum. Uh, Gainesville. And, Je- uh, and I have to pick up a game on Jeff. So that's, that's where I'm going to Okay. Uh, Gainesville, Jackson County, Big Red in this one. Yeah, Big Red all the way. Gainesville rolls. Yeah, I'm going to say Gainesville. Red Elephants. All right, Gilmer at White County. Mm. Pressure mm. game for, mm. for both teams, but especially for White County. Let's see, White County <laughs> needing that win, right? Yep. Um, last week, man, what a game for them. Uh, just couldn't get it done against Pickens. That was probably one of the shockers of the week. But it is in the land of Cleve. I'm going to go with the Warriors. 
What's wrong, Seth? <laughs> what's the matter, Seth? You, Bo. <laughs> That's what's wrong. God. Just the outright stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to pick or what? I am going to pick. I'll pick White County. I'm going to ple- stop doing that. <laughs> stop. <laughs> you don't like my Land of Cleave reference? No, okay. I don't. In the Cleave of Land. Cle- yeah. Cleveland Lantis. Uh <laughs> Hunt, uh, White County does not just need to win. They need to win by seven or more to guarantee a spot. Now, Itch. they could also get it if they win and Pickens loses. So, there's a few different ways White County gets in here. But it's they need to get this win. They need to get this win. And so, I am going to take uh, White County, and I think they do win by a touchdown or more. I think the Warriors seal up their playoff spot, but their defense needs to show up. I think they will score. By the way, Seth, we are not picking the Pickens game this week. So. Yeah, there you go. Well, but you did it anyway, so you did the pun anyway. Coach? Yeah, I'm going I'm going White County. I feel like you struck a nerve down there, my man in the basement, man. You got to make that thing right. <laughs> we'll make it right. <laughs> no, you won't. <laughs> White County struggled with the uh, with the quarterback mm. run a couple weeks ago against Cal Faulkner, and Gilmer likes to run the quarterback in the triple option. I agree with you, though, Bo. It, this being in the land of Cleves, I take uh, White County at home. <laughs> there it is. All right, Walker. All right. <laughs> Habersham Central at Shiloh. A, a big game for Hab Central as far as playoffs go easy for them <laughs> all they need to do is win and they're in and they don't have to worry about the plus minus whatever deal that's going to be so they have to go to Shiloh i'm going to pick the raiders yeah give me the raiders too yeah i think habersham goes down there and gets it done same Shiloh, not as bad as appalachie still bad though habersham yep. central still but bad, athletic yeah. athletically bad Yes, athletically bad. Or athletic and bad. Yeah, that, that One of the two. That, that suits. It. Yeah, that, that does. All right, Johnson at Midtown. The Knights going for a 500 season, and I think they do it. Johnson goes to Midtown, gets the gets the dub. Oh, yeah, I'm rooting for the Knights. Give me, give me Johnson. Yeah, I like Johnson as well in this one. They're playing really well, especially on defense. They've been playing really well. Same. Going with the Knights, man. I want them to go 500. That that coach deserves that. That program deserves it. Knights by a lot. By a lot. I don't know what the number will be. be What's the line in that game? It's even? Oh, yeah. Johnson winning by a lot. Yeah. Well, don't give away your lock yet, Walker. We still got – we don't want to spoil That's not what I'm picking for my lock, though. I've already got that locked away. Okay. Okay. Oh, uh, I see what you did there. Yeah, that's real good. All right, that's uh, that's it for the rundown. Uh, Roll our music there, Seth. Well, hey, we should tell tell Coach thanks for coming on the show. We are, as soon as the music starts rolling. Okay. That's not how that works. The music rolls like – after music. do you forget how this show works you've only been hosting he it for frequently three years. does the music rolls during the outro no yeah in post <laughs> look look i i got you hey coach we want to thank you for coming on the show hey also best of luck to you we're really rooting for you down there and we've had a lot of fun covering you here over the last several years much appreciated guys thanks for thanks for your time thanks for having me on coach by the way um do you have a helicopter to make the trips back and forth to the basketball games this year well, I'm waiting for uh, Kirby uh, to shoot me a text back, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to pencil in that back seat so we could we could double time it. Whatever kids he's offering, I want to offer to. <laughs> All right, Coach, man. Good luck, man, building that program. All right, guys, let's get to the locks this week. By the way, everybody won except Jeff. Oh, oh Jeff Hart. A lost. Oh, no. Yes. That's a shame. That's a shame, which means he uh, gets to pick last. In the words of Dave Chappelle, you hate to see it. But more than that, <laughs> yeah. you love yeah. to see it. <laughs> yes, yes, we do. Okay, so lock order this week is myself, Caleb Walker, Seth, and... Who has Jeff. the lead in locks, by the way? Uh, nine and two, nine and two, nine and two. It's uh, me, Jeff, and you, Ke- Caleb. Okay. It's the guys that are... In front of the camera, most of the show. Yeah. Well, you're in front of the camera. Yeah, but I, you guys are in front of the. You're inside camera the computer, more. but he's physically he's behind that camera. Yeah. Exactly. That's, you guys are in front true. of the camera yeah. like seventy percent of the show. Like, I'm in front like twenty percent, maybe. What's it like sitting inside that computer there? 
it, it, it's it's a little boxy. <laughs> All right, so who's got the first? All right, pick? so uh, I get the first pick this week. I don't get I don't wow. get a little drum to touch from Seth on that. Uh, do we have it? I mean, we have it. Do I want to do it? No. Will you do it? There it is. Okay, there it was. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it was faint, but we got it there. Uh, who am the I going to pick this week? Thing is, it mixes with the music, and I like the music. So. Bam, 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 bam. What you got, Bo? Bam, bam, There's a lot of locks bam, to pick bam, from bam, this week. I'm going to go with East for side. East for Sai ah, plus gotta, eleven. Thank, thank you, Walker. Man, Poe never I'm just gonna go with says, East. Uh, yeah, East for Sai to win. Yeah, yeah, that's what I want. Okay. Yep. There you go. All right. Who's up next? You uh, are. You are. Okay. Perfect. All right. I am going to go. Let's see here. I'm gonna go with. Give me East Jackson plus eleven at home or no on the road. I'm sorry. Either way, at Athens Academy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> there it is, folks. Once again. Fly, well, eagle, fly. Yeah. Fly, eagle, fly. I'm going to go out on a limb on this one, guys. Mm, speaking of flying. Give me Jefferson minus 10 on a Thursday Ooh, on the road. Boy. All right. Okay. okay. Double digit spread That's on gonna a be region a, title. It's going to be a close game, but I think Jefferson scores late to make it a two touchdown spread. That a boy. That a boy. Back door my way in. There you go. And that leaves me, Seth Chapman. Me. I, mm-hmm. Give me Gainesville plus, minus 38 on Jackson County. That's a big number. Hitch. Do Gainesville. we get to pick for Jeff since he's not here? Yes. No, we just get to send me this list and he gets to pick his his whatever. I want to give him Appalachie plus 37, though, to give him a loss. We could do that. You want to just do that? <laughs> We, Executive team decision. We picked for you, Jeff. Sorry. So sorry. <laughs> okay. Somehow, somehow I, I don't think he cares too much right now. No. Because he he's doesn't. on vacation. No. He might care when he gets back. He might care a whole lot. But, uh, but yeah, so that's it for the locks. And that's it for the show. Roll the music. Is that the right music? Are yes. sure? Yeah, that's the right. Yeah. I just wanted to see what Seth would say. Hey. Last last regular season this pick'em is show. This is it. We're, unfortunately, if if nobody makes up ground, you or I, which I don't think I'm going to make up any ground on Jeff. Wait, do we not have pick'em shows in the playoffs? We do, but remember last year we did a regular season champ, and then we cleared everything, and then we did playoffs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well. Unfortunately, that's it. Hey, by the way, radio games this week. Lumpkin County at East Hall, AM 550. West East Hall, West Hall. yeah, okay, there. Um, boom, start back, rewind. Lumpkin County at West Hall, AM five fifty, FM one hundred two point nine, East Forsyth at North Hall, and ninety four point five FM the Lake. It's Gainesville at Jackson County. So there are those games. What's on the tailgate show? Uh, we're going to hear from uh, North Hall and East Forsyth's head coaches. Go over playoff scenarios and get ready to wrap up the regular season. Wrap it up, and don't forget to check out our X page, formerly known as Twitter, uh, to follow the games, highlights, and more there. Score updates uh, throughout the night. Also, over on Access, WDUN.com's Friday game night page. We'll also have stories, highlights, and much, much more of Week 12. For the entire crew, minus Jeff, this week, enjoy Week number 12 of high school football. Goodbye. Fly, eagle, fly, fly. Uh, what, what sound does an eagle make? <laughs> <laughs> that's it? <laughs> that, you, that was somehow worse than what I was doing. And that's it. Three, two, one. Uh, yeah, yeah, there we go. <laughs> See, I can't trust the countdown because <laughs> you're going to do something at the end of it. Aga! What is that? Aga! Why Looks like you're trying to shoo a bird away. <laughs> Get on out of here. Get on out of here. <laughs> You've got eight different options. Yeah, I know. I've got so many different options for cold opens right now. I can do it. I can do a post credits too.